Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the McGonagall Boxing Podcast. Let's get straight down to it, shall we? Please check me out on Facebook, Instagram and of course my YouTube channel, the McGonagall Boxing Podcast. Like and subscribe. Okay, so Dillian White, the WBC heavyweight number one contender, has split with long-term outstanding trainer Mark Tibbs after four years and 11 fights together. Why, oh, why, oh, why? Well... There's obviously mixed reports, of course, uh, as you'd expect, coming from both sides. Um, Tibbs basically said that, you know, it hasn't been easy for any fighter, I accept that. But training camps have been irregular. But finally, there was a Povetkin date given. But for some reason, Dillian White only wanted Tibbs to come in three weeks at the end of the camp, of an eight-week camp. Tibbs says, no, that's not how I work. I'm with a trainer from um, the start to the end of the camp so I can have my full stamp on things. I don't want to just take over from someone. And then, you know, rightly so, it's it's a business. He's got his reputation. What happens if he gets knocked out, Dillian White? Unlikely against an agent, but even so, who's it going to fall on? Of course, it'd fall on Tibbs. People would ignore the first five weeks of camp where Tibbs wasn't there. So totally get why Tibbs would say that. Very strange why Dillian White would, would make Tibbs come in for the last three weeks only. Um, but of course, I believe Dillian White's saying that, you know, Tibbs wasn't willing to travel. I believe um, Dillian White was abroad. He's not, he's not in the UK at the moment. And obviously due to quarantine, um, Tibbs couldn't get out. Uh, but obviously, he's, you know, so I think Dillian White was a little bit upset by that, but I think Tibbs informed him of that. Um, he wouldn't be able to travel out until the end of, of May, early June. Um, and of course, early June came and Tibbs, quite rightly, as you would do, say, right, I'm, I'm okay to travel now. By that time, I think well, Dillian White had started his camp and that was that. So Minx reports, uh, Dillian White... Seems to be blaming Tibbs for not travelling out, um, in, to, alluding that he wasn't committed to him, um, which obviously Tibbs, and I, I have to say I believe Tibbs is complete nonsense. You know, Tibbs would do anything for Dillian White. Uh, you know, he had to quarantine. He was just thinking about his, his safety. And as soon as that was safe, as soon as he, he was allowed to travel out, he was willing to do that. But he wasn't willing to take part the last three weeks of the camp. So, yeah, as you can see, this one's probably going to go on and on and on. But what's not right, without doubt, is the fact that Dillian White didn't meet Tibbs face-to-face, didn't even give him a phone call. No, instead he called his lawyer to do his dirty work. His lawyer phoned Tibbs and ultimately fired him on, on over the phone, on the spot, over the phone. That is not right. When you look at Tibbs, when he first took over uh, Dillian White, Dillian White just been knocked out by Joshua. He was out of shape. He'd never had a game plan or kind of any real experience inside the ring. He was struggling, with all due respect, to beat domestic fighters like Dave Allen, who took him the full 10 rounds. Ian Lewison, uh, you know, gave him a tough fight. And this was at British level, okay? Since then, Tibbs and the Tibbs dynasty are always known for this, getting their fighters into great shape. Got Dillian White from 18 and a half stone down to a trim lean, but still strong 17 stone. Gave him a good experience in the ring. Great tactics. Um, you know, stopped uh, Dillian White from just rushing in, throwing aimlessly punches. He gave him direction, purpose, and of course, guided Dillian White to, to build up that devastating left counter hook, which he's now got. So... You know, the improvements were there to be made. By the time um, Tibbs had finished with Dillian White, not only had he, gone, had he gone from British level to number one WBC challenger, but he'd beaten, you know, world-class fighters like Oscar Rivas, Derek Chisora twice, and Joseph Parker. Not even mentioning his brutal knockout of, OK, a faded but still former world champion, Lucas Brown. So... Yeah, it's just, it begs belief when you look at it like that. The improvements that Tibbs, and time and investment and effort that Tibbs gave White. And it also seemed like they were close. You know, you'd hear interviews where Dylan White was saying, you know, he's like a an older brother to me. He's, you know, I'm going to be by his side. He's, he, 
you know, he's like family to me. He's brought me out along. He's got patience with me. Because there's no no secret that Dylan White is a tough character. Eddie Hearn says it all the time to deal with. You know, he's he's very headstrong. You know, he knows his worth, which is a good thing. But um, he's opinionated and he can be hard to coach. Because a lot of time, um, you know, he thinks he knows best. Sometimes he does, but sometimes he doesn't. Um, you know, it can be quite mood mood swings, which a lot of fighters can can have. Where one minute he's you know he's relax, relaxing, juvenile, and the next minute he's deadly serious. So uh, it can be quite you know erratic. And let's be honest, his weight can flummox up and down, especially when he's outside the fight camp. And he's not known to be the uh, how should we say it, the most dedicated of trainers. Before Tibbs came along, Tibbs instilled work ethic dedication and hard work into Dillian White and he also gave him a massive public appeal turnover because people went from not particularly liking him to suddenly being their number one fighter you know they admired the way he'd fight anyone at any time and always gave it his all um, and they they were you know clearly proud of the British public of Dillian White's improvements so much so that he's the number one challenger for WBC belt so, I mean, and the fact he's got the biggest fights of his career coming up because he's won his court case against WBC, so he's guaranteed a title shot next year. But he's got to get past his Povetkin fight. He should do because Povetkin's obviously on the slide. But you still don't want to fight a former world champion, a former Olympic champion, without a coach in your corner. It seems utter madness. And who's going to coach him? You look around, is Adam Booth? I'm not sure if that's a good mix, even though Adam Booth's a very good trainer. Shane McGuigan, I can't see taking him on. Um, you know, he's got too many fighters at the moment. And obviously he coaches a Coley, who's got a lot of beef with Dylan White. So then you kind of stuck with, OK... You know, I can't see Dillian White locating up to Joe Gallagher's stable up in Manchester. But he's also said he doesn't want to locate to the States where Virgil Hill would be a Freddie Roach. These kind of trainers would be a good match for him. So who's he going to go to? It just seems utter madness what's going on right now with Dillian White. Um, and I think he'll look back and regret his decision to fire Tibbs. I really do. Um, and I think he should be more grateful for the work and time that Tibbs has put into him. But, as I always say, I think he'll be Povetkin still. But ultimately, he's going to get found out when he fights a world champion like Tyson Fury. Not an old Tyson Fury, but a fighter very much in his prime without a lead trainer. Or a, a, someone who's really going to impact him, someone who's going to who he respects and listens to, like he did Tibbs. Tibbs had the ability to bring out the best in Dillian White as a person and as a fighter, and that's not easily replaced. Um, so Tibbs will be fine. He's got a young stable, a lot of boxers, you know, and of course a lot of people want to work with him. They know his skill set. He knows he's a smart coach, gets these fighters into phenomenal shape, but also gives them at the correct tactics at the correct time to dethrone their opponents like Dylan White did against Chisora in the second fight so for me it's a bad decision it's the wrong decision I hope they can reconcile I don't think they're going to though and that will leave Dylan White I believe with a mountain to climb in his WBC title fight after Povetkin alright guys let me know what your thoughts are anyway on the Tibbs Dillian White split. How can you fire a coach you've got 11 wins with with no defeats? Beggar's belief. All right, guys, I'm out. I'm